Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss and welcome back to our tutorial series on gRPC using the Go programming language. In the last video, I showed you how to persist user data of our gRPC service using an in-memory data structure. And in this video, we will implement an alternative method to persisting our user data by storing it in JSON format on the file system. We will encode our proto messages into JSON format using a protobuf package called protojson. Now, why are we implementing this alternative method to persisting user data in an in-memory data structure? Well, as I mentioned in the last video, storing our user data in an in-memory data structure is not a scalable solution. If we were to store hundreds or thousands of users in an in-memory data structure, we'd quickly run out of memory on the machine. And as a first step to making our solution more scalable, we can implement this alternative method where we encode our user data in JSON format and write it out to disk so that we're not storing all of that user data in memory all of the time. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more series like this. And if you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee and let's get started. Okay, so all of the changes that we're going to make are going to be contained within the user management uh, server code. We shouldn't have to make any modifications to the client code or to the service definition. And the first thing that I'm going to do in the server code is import the proto JSON package. So I'll import it below the gRPC import. And then the next thing that we want to do is remove the user list uh, attribute from the user management server. So I'm going to scroll down to uh, our user management server definition, and I'm going to remove the user list uh, attribute. And I'm also going to remove the um, instantiation here of a user list in the constructor uh, function for a user management server. With the new implementation, we won't have any use for uh, the user list attribute. And the bulk of our changes are going to be inside of the create new user function. So when we receive a new user, instead of appending that user to the deprecated user list attribute, we will instead marshal uh, that user into JSON format and we'll write that JSON formatted user out to a file. Now, since we'll be using input output and OS functionality, I did forget two imports. Okay, so the first import is going to be OS, and then the second import uh, will be IO, IO, util. So now that we have those imported, we can uh, go ahead and start modifying the create new user function. So we're going to store the user data uh, in a file called users.json. And the first thing that we're going to do in this function is read from the users.json file if it exists. So below line 44, I'm going to define two new uh, variables and I'm going to call the IOUtil function read file. So the first variable is uh, read bytes and then error. And then we'll uh, invoke IOUtil read file and pass in the file name, which is going to be called users.json. And then directly below this, we'll create a new uh, protobuf users list. So users list will be a pointer to protobuf uh, user list. And this user list struct is what we're going to marshal into JSON format and write out to a file. And you'll see why we're writing out a user list a little bit later. And lines 47 and 48 will keep uh, as is. And then line 49 will delete since that was appending the created user to the deprecated uh, user list attribute. Now we'll check the error to see if the users.json file doesn't exist. And if it doesn't, that means that this is the first user that's being created. So we have to create a users.json file. So first I'll say if error is not equal to nil, and then if os dot is not exist and pass in the error. So like I said, if the file hasn't been created, then we will go ahead and create one. 
and we'll just log to the console that the file wasn't found. File not found. Creating a new file. Okay. And what we'll do is append the created user to the user list that we just created. And I just noticed a, a problem here. This is users list, not user list. Okay. And then below line 52, I'll invoke uh, user, uh, users list dot users dot append and then created user. And once we've appended the created user, we'll then marshal the user list uh, into JSON format. So I'll define two new variables and invoke the proto JSON marshal function. The first variable will be JSON bytes and then error is equal to proto JSON uh, dot marshal. And then we will pass in a proto message. In this case, our proto message is the users list uh, that we uh, just created. So the Marshall function should return a JSON formatted byte array. After calling the function, we'll check if there was an error marshalling our uh, proto message. So if error is not, not equal to nil, we'll log fatal JSON marshalling failed. If the marshalling of our message doesn't fail, uh, then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write those JSON bytes out to the users.json file. So in line, I will check if there's an error and invoke the write file function from IOUtil. So if error equal IOUtil dot write file, and then we'll pass in the file uh, name, which will be users.json. And then we'll pass in uh, the JSON bytes variable. And then we'll set the permission. Okay. And if error is not uh, equal to nil, then we will log fatal failed write to file. Otherwise, if the write was successful, we'll just return the created user and nil. And then if we get some other type of read error um, and not that the file wasn't found, uh, what we'll do is we'll just log fatal error reading file. Okay. So that wraps up the case where the users.json file doesn't exist and we have to create it and append a new user to the users.json file. Now we have to handle the case where the users.json file does exist and it contains users. And so we're appending a new user to the users.json file. In the case where the users.json file already contains user data, what we'll do is we'll unmarshal the user data from the users.json file into our user uh, users list uh, data structure. We'll then append the new user to the users list data structure and write it back out to the users.json file. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is invoke protojson unmarshal on the red bytes from the users.json file. So here I'll say if error, equals proto json dot unmarshal and then I'll pass in red bytes and then the user uh, users list uh, proto message and then we'll check for an error uh, in line so if error is not equal to nil we'll simply log fatal failed to parse user list. And then if it successfully unmarshaled red bytes into the users list uh, proto message, then what we'll do is we'll append the created user uh, to the users list. So here I'll say users list dot users dot append 
and then created user. And after we have appended the new user to users list, we will uh, marshal the users list uh, proto message back into JSON format. And for this part, I'm going to be lazy and copy the code from lines 54 uh, to 60, where we marshal the users list uh, into JSON bytes and then write out uh, those JSON bytes to the users.json file. And we'll paste it right below here. Of course, it's best to move repeated code like this into its own function. And feel free to, to do that if you'd like to. Um, but uh, I'm going to leave it as is. So let me just move these back a couple of tabs. And then we're done uh, with our modifications to the create new user function. So now all we have to do is modify the get users function, and uh, it will be a little bit more complex than what we have here on uh, line 82. So the first thing that we'll want to do in the get users function is read the users.json file. So like we did earlier, I'll define uh, two uh, variables, JSON bytes and error is equal to ioutil.readfile and then users.json. And then we'll check if there's an error. So if error is not equal to nil, we'll log fatal and say failed read from file. If we did successfully read from the file, uh, then what we'll do is we'll define a new user list uh, proto message. So this will be a pointer to uh, user list struct. And then as you might have guessed, we will unmarshal the JSON bytes uh, into the users uh, list proto message, and then we'll return that proto message. So uh, if error is equal to proto JSON dot unmarshal, We'll pass in JSON bytes and then the users list. And if error is not equal to nil, we will log fatal. And then if the unmarshalling was successful, we will simply return users list and nil. And that should wrap up all of the changes that we need to make to the server code. So when we run the program, everything should work as it did before, uh, but now we're storing the user data in the users.json file. So let's go ahead and run uh, the program and see if user data is being stored correctly in the users.json file. So in my terminal, I'll first invoke the server program. And then I will invoke the client program. And it looks like the program uh, worked correctly. So really all we need to verify is that the users.json file contains uh, Alice and Bob. So let's go ahead and cat the users.json file and it looks like it is stored correctly. So we have Alice and then Bob. And then if we run the client pro, uh, program again, we should see uh, an additional Alice and Bob. So a total of four users. So I will rerun the client program. Okay, and now we see there's four years, uh, users returned from the get users function. And if I cat the users.json file, we have uh, those four users stored in the JSON file. So in its current state, I still don't see this as a scalable solution because we have to read all of the data from the users.json file into the users list uh, struct. If we had hundreds or thousands of users written out to the users.json file, it would quickly uh, use up all of the memory on the machine when we load uh, that data into the users uh, list struct. But remember that I said that this is a first step towards a scalable solution. 
If we wanted to make this more scalable in the context of the user management gRPC service, uh, one thing we could do is take uh, a single user and write that single user's data out to its own uh, JSON file. We could also shard user data into multiple JSON files based off of uh, last names or IDs, but that would make uh, this implementation uh, a lot more complex than it is right now. I think this solution might not be viable for the user management service, but it would be uh, more than sufficient for a different kind of service. For instance, maybe a service that stores and returns configuration data where you don't have a lot of data stored in a single file. But either way, we will continue building our user management service in future videos. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far, and if you have, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. As always, the code that we wrote today is available in a GitHub repository that I've linked in the video description below. Thanks for watching.